All right, y'all. We got some of my two favorite people. How y'all doing? Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to my favorite two people. We got Julia Ritter and Megan Bushhausen. Both of y'all. How y'all doing today? Good. How you doing? Good. Megan, you might you, you might be uh it sounds like your sound's a little far away from us in space, but I'll give you just a moment to see what's going on. But other than that, you're sounding wonderful as always. Oh, what's ground been y'all's favorite moment so far? Ground control to major Tom. There we go. Now here you're coming in loud and clear. Transmission's coming to us loud and clear. Love it, love it. What's major Tom. <laughs> Sorry, you don't need to hear me sing. Heck yeah, we do. We do. The next time we'll have a karaoke part of email camp. But... <laughs> awesome, y'all. Awesome, awesome. Kendrick's cool, y'all. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> awesome, y'all. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and let y'all take this away. And uh, I'm being uh, still pinged in the cargo bay. I got to figure out what the heck is going on. So I'll see y'all in just a moment. Go ahead and take cargo it away. And I'll see y'all. Yeah, Bye. I'll see you in a little bit. I really wish I could close this chat because there's no chat like an email camp chat and uh, I'm going to get so distracted. Yes. All right. Let's get moving, Julia, so we can okay, get okay. some of these uh, email debriefs. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so hello. We are Megan and Julia. We are the uh, email team, the dynamic duo, the writer dies behind um, Cinch Email. Um, so if you've received um, an email from one of our brands, chances are you, I mean, we're behind it. So um, <laughs> putting face to the names, you know. Um, so we kind of, so Megan handles the code, I handle the copy. And so we were talking about email camp. We wanted to um, do an email debrief because why not? Sounds like fun. So um, we're going to go through a couple emails that you submitted today. And thank you for those, by the way. Um, and I just want to, like, this is going to be very thoughtful and constructive. Um, so if you have a comment that builds on that and aligns with that, please share it. But of course, just want to make sure that this is a maintained, respectful environment. So Megan, take it away. Um, Thomas, I think you need to release the screen sharing for our little intro slide so I can go ahead and share email and acid. So I think today, you be good just now. Break, uh, looks like I'm good. So today, what we're going to look at, um, we ran uh, three or four emails through email and acid. That's all we're going to have time for today. Uh, we're going to look at some accessibility stuff and we're going to look at design and copy. Um, we also ran the emails through our screenshot generators. So we're going to be looking at Androids, iPhones, Outlook stuff, Gmail, all in light mode and dark mode. Um, and hopefully we'll have time to kind of dive into those screenshots a little bit so that you can see how these emails differ depending on the environment you're viewing it. Yeah. Are you, Megan, can you hear us? Perfect. The classic. Can you see my screen? Yes. Can see your right. screen and now we can hear you better. Oh, what's okay. this one? Uh, Julia. Julia, <laughs> I messed up. No, it was a dual effort. It was a dual mistake. <laughs> so for those, those who are uh, were paying attention last week and we sent out our, our uh, email debrief email, um, Megan for a couple of hours. Hi, Megan. Hi, Two Megan. hours came to my Megan club. Hi, Megan. Hi, Megan. Hi, Megan. <laughs> I think Megan's a pretty awesome. Um, I had a little bit of a mishap exporting my email code and I was testing the personalization of my liquid and did not turn that personalization off, not realizing that it was going to keep those values. So I used my own name. I actually usually use Julia's. <laughs> but she was out on vacation, I think it was. So I used my own. Um, we tested it, ran it through EOA, tested it. Everything looked good. Sent it. Started getting DMs. Sony email geeks. Next. Your sound is going oh, a little bit in and I out. Did not. Just be careful of what you're okay. touching. Maybe it's getting feedback. Oh, it switched to my AirPods. There we go. Can we all hear me better? Yes. Fun fact, I checked my settings to make sure it was going to my good mic. 
and it showed my good mic. And apparently when I came into this session, it switched to my AirPods. So Not now you clear an iSound podcast quality. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so anyways, long story short, sometimes you just need to slow down, mm -hmm. check your stuff and email mistakes happen. And that's the dealio. <laughs> And we got the Sunny Groups email, which received even more feedback than the yes. email. Um, but we don't recommend sending erroneous emails just to send an oops email because that's not. Yes. Good. But who are we to judge? Yeah. We did not do this on oh. purpose just for this event. Yes. We did not do this on purpose. Um, I hope everybody heard me good enough before. I am sorry for that little mishap. Um, all right. So let's move on to our first email. <laughs> say oh totally on purpose no it wasn't say oh <laughs> um, <laughs> it was all right complete accident. <laughs> complete accident um all right so we are going to start off with guardian alarm um julia do you want to take it away on the copy sure yeah um so i just want to note that um so we're reviewing all of these in email on acid um, rather than doing it in slides. So otherwise we would have put like the subject line in here as well. So just to state the subject line, it was, here's your chance to earn a hundred dollars, which I mean, very clear and concise, right? Um, so overall, I like that this is not a lengthy email. It has a good breakup of text and other elements. Um, the CTA like really gets the point across and explains what you want them to do um, and where you're gonna take them next. Um, I just kind of noted like other options would be like get $100 off since that is the main, you know, that would be the main draw here the line with the subject line. Um, and I do like the testimonial, but I want to know more about Mary C. You know, I want to know um, how long has she been a customer? What is she a customer of? Um, or like what, it, what products does she like? Um, so overall, I think it's, you know, you have a good structure and like a good foundation. Um, where I do get stuck is that you have about three-ish times um, what uh, is being offered and what the friend is going to get, but it's kind of in a different way or different phrase in each different way. Um, so in the headline image, it's $100 for you, $300 for M or them. Um, but you know, then it's a, then they're getting a camera, but then like, what kind of camera? I was thinking like a Nikon digital camera, but then I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> maybe it's a security camera. Um, it just took me a second to realize. Um, I think you could really benefit from just focusing on the bullets here. And Megan, I'm sure you'll um, talk about this as well in terms of design. But um, I think if you focus on the bullets, it makes it easier for the eye to scan it. And then um, you can get more into the info um, or like more details there rather than having headline, the blurb, which is a little bit wordy, but provides more context than the bullets. Um, I think less is more um, just to make sure that the goal gets across. Megan, what do you think? Yeah, totally agree. Um, from a design perspective, I think there are a couple of things that we can do here to just elevate it a little bit more. Um, it's pretty easy to read, but let's talk about some of those small things that we can do. I often like to think about design a lot of times as like a design gulf where less is more. Um, so you can totally, you know, add and remove elements as needed. Um, the first thing I would do on this email is take that hero image and just have it go to the quote unquote bleed to the edge of the email um, instead of having that fade in. That just feels like an extra bit of visual noise that's just not really needed for this email. Um, another thing I would look into is with this design is taking that big headline, 100 for you, 300 for them. Take that out of your image and put it in your text and make it a header. Because if we turn our images off, mm -hmm. we no longer see that header and we don't have any alt text here. So we don't really even know what's going on in these images, um, which shows how important things like alt text. And we talk about accessibility all the time and I'll get into that more in a moment. Um, but we can see here that we lose some context uh, when we lock those images and we lose the 
bullet points and you know all that jazz. So we wanna get as much as possible into live text that makes sense for your brand and for your um, production. Um, here, we don't know how you're building these emails. So we see that your email title, when we put it into email and acid said, my email subject, which is you know obviously default text. Uh, if you can control that, I highly recommend either making it your brand name or even better yet if you have a piece of liquid liquid code or other short code that is provided by your esp popping that in there so then it just populates your subject line for you and mm -hmm. then you don't even have to think about setting that email title it happens automatically every time and we love a good automation to make things easier you also need to get this language set uh for your screen readers because if say this email was in French and you did not choose a language, it would be reading that French in an American accent and that would be very <laughs> bad and that French would not sound correct. So you wanna make sure that your language is being read with the proper accent so people with screen readers can you know, listen to the email and know what the heck is going on. Um, the third thing that I would do is get this CTA out yeah. of an image and make yeah. it live text. CTAs, always live text, always make your CTAs live text. Uh, because again, we looked at those images off. We blocked those images. We can't take any action on this email whatsoever. So if somebody's images aren't loading or they block images by default, they can't take action because they can't see your CTA and you want your email to convert. So get that into live text if you can. In fact, the only link you could see right now is the unsubscribe don't want that oh is that a fact i didn't realize that mm -hmm. wow yeah yeah the only link in here is unsubscribe um and this might cause people to unsubscribe so you don't want that to happen and the final thing that i will say about this email is let's try adding some more white text in. So what I mean about mm. that is just more space around your design elements, like above those stars and under Mary C, like letting that breathe a little bit more and getting some padding on the sides so that everything just like feels like it's breathing and it's not all crunched together and feels like it's overloaded. Yeah. And Julia, do we want to take a quick look at the screenshots? Sure, yeah. All right, let's pop over to our email previews. So here we did some screenshots. Um, so as we know with email, things like dark mode, we can control it in some places, control, can't control in others. Um, we can control it in iPhone, but not on Android. I'm going to take a quick look at dark mode on Android to see what happens. You can see how this text swaps. I can already tell you this email is not optimized for mobile, so you might want to look at doing that. It's not awful mm. until you get down to this footer text that unsubscribe is viewable, which is really the most important thing here in my opinion. So that's good. But you may want to if you, if you may want to look into ways to control this color, which there's a little bit of a dark mode blending hack um, that you can, that you can look up to control color if you are coding this if you are using a drag and drop visual editor then just messing with the color a little bit and then using email and acid to test to see how it inverts is also a great way although a little bit of a time consuming way to figure out what color you need to be using here yep. love it and we can see in comparison with ios's dark mode mm. um you have a little bit of a full width issue here so just take a look at that code um, but you can see that color doesn't change. So we see how the different email clients start messing with things a bit differently. And Outlook, I believe we didn't see any issues. It looked great. Check that out, Outlook. Thank you, <laughs> Outlook 19. No major issues. So great job there. Unheard of. Unheard of. They always run into Outlook issues. Ran into Outlook issues yesterday because I didn't close a tag properly. It was annoying. <sighs> All right, shall we move on to Cricut? Yes, so next up is Cricut. Um, how cool, right? Um, so the subject line for this one was hot tip, how to customize with iron on, in parentheses, HTV. Um, listen, I love a pun. If you've received one of my emails, you know I love a pun. <laughs> so many puns. <laughs> <laughs> or a <laughs> pouring Alice. <laughs> 
Um, Anyways, very, <laughs> big help from Mary on that one. Um, so I think this is very creative. I almost think you don't need the how to in there as well. I think it'd just be like hot tip customized with iron on, you know, so succinct um, gets the point. And I just think it has more um, impact. Um, so if we scroll through here, Megan, um, I kind of went in like order of um, mm -hmm. the, the email. Um, so there is a spot that says love or like no stress heat press. If you go down um, and just to like kind of explain what the iron does, no stress heat press, I thought that was so clever because um, clearly we're talking about an iron and you don't want it to be stressful. Um, I really love how clean this email is. And I know Megan is going to rave about the GIF above, so I will keep my raving about it to a minimum, but I think it's so cool. Um, your brand and your products, Cricut, are very fun. They're used for fun things. Um, and I think this aligns well with that, but I think you could magnify it even more. Um, I think you could really like just go crazy with it because you're using create or crickets to be creative. And so your copy can reflect that. Um, one area where I see that happening is with your CTAs. You have shop now, you have browse projects, you have start learning, um, you know, mix it up a little bit. You have those puns available to you. Um, I think that's a great place for a CTA because you can explain people where you, what you want them to do while still being a little bit catchy. Um, when it comes to the browse projects one, um, whose projects? Are they browsing their own? Are they able to sh share projects in their account? Are they browsing something that, you know, you've put together for them? What are the, what are we browsing? Um, and if you can scroll down, Megan, to the GIF for me. Um, right there, yeah. So we have the click the bookmark icon. Um, I'm a bit of a stickler for anything that says click. Um, you know, click here, click this link. Um, I want you to stay away from that because click here is is a spam trigger. So we don't want that to happen to your beautiful email. Um, you can easily leave that out, bookmark now, make later, and then have that just to be um, save projects to your profile. It's like your own crafty inspiration board. And that would be completely, it would be the same. And I think even more effective because um, they're going to end up clicking on those images anyway. Um, and I think, you know, you just get more to the point with that. Um, and then I just want to draw attention to one more thing. And Megan, I think we're going to also talk about this with your um, your design um, feedback. But what is the goal of this email? I think there's a few different things in here. You have, um, you have both top, you have let's customize it with iron on, start learning. So you have a learning CTA. Then you have a browse project CTA, and then you sell the iron at the very end. Um, we were just a little cons confused of like what the goal was. We think if you're trying to sell something, maybe even put that first, show them what they can do, and then give them projects um, to show um, how they can apply that at the end. Meg, do you agree with that? Yes, I absolutely agree with that. It totally depends on the goal of your email. Now, if your goal is to educate, and then through that, like this is just a newsletter where you're educating your pro your customers about the product, then maybe you don't need this section to be as big and it's more of a soft ask. Um, but if your goal is to get people to purchase this item from the get-go, then I would recommend getting this up further in the email. Because remember, we only have, what, 8 to 11 seconds with a single person when it comes mm -hmm. to most emails. Um, so you need to get to the crux of what you're trying to do for sure. What else do you think? All right. So design time. I love this overall branding. I think this email shows that the Cricut emails are an awesome candidate for an email design system. People who talk to me know I talk about email design systems like all the time. I've given talks on them. We have tons of articles on the EOA website about them. I mm -hmm. love a beautifully designed email design system. So some things that I noticed here and why I say that is because we need to start standardizing our text sizes and button sizes a little bit more. Uh, so we have this lovely H1 uh, live, I think it's live text. Yes, it is uh, live text header. And our body image is very small. 
-hmm. and the spacing between the header to the body text, very big. So the first thing we need to do is bump this up a little bit more to at least 16 pixels. Um, if you're working with M's and you're working with code, set your HTML and root font size to 16 pickles, pixels and start <laughs> using those M's. I said pickles first. What? I don't even like pickles. Um, pixels and, <laughs> you know, set that to be your base 1M. And then you can think about your header size being 2M. So double the size. You can start thinking in that sort of way, um, which is a little bit of a different way of thinking. Um, and also, uh, Julie, I don't remember already if you said this, but like with your CTAs, um, you can mess around with that language a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I do love a good like pill looking CTA. Mm. Um, in this particular email, I would probably nix this huge background image uh, because it's a lot of empty space to get to the next part. And mm -hmm. I'm not super familiar with Cricut's, uh, or Cricut's uh, products and did not realize that over here poking out was the product that you are selling in this email. Um, maybe people getting this email are super familiar with it. So that wouldn't be a problem. But for me, like I just had no idea. Um, so yeah, I would take out this background image and take this GIF, which I absolutely adore. I've been raving about this GIF since I first saw it, been raving about it to Julia. And I would make this potentially your hero Yeah, with your language up here because it's showing all of these already customized products. Like, oh, I could customize with all of these. Then you click the CTA to go learn more or whatever. Um, add, in my opinion, the Browse Project CTA is a little bit of a wasted CTA because of what's above and below it. I think this entire section could be nixed. Get rid of that background image. Add, move this up to the top. I also was thinking if you are coding these emails, could you have this GIF? But if you're targeting Gmail users and you're targeting Apple users, could you do something really fun with AMP for email to make it interactive for those Gmail users and do something really fun and interactive for those Apple users? It's more production time. I don't know how you code your emails, but my mind started going in that way. So I thought I'd, you know, bring it up. If any of it sparks a cool idea, please run with it. That'd be so cool. So, so cool. Uh, and I love this little section here. Mm -hmm. um, great spacing. When I was talking about white space before, this is it. It's perfect. I love it. Uh, the only thing I would change here, and this would go out throughout the entire email, is that I would standardize those headers for the font typeface. Um, make sure you're using the same yeah. one. Um, that H1, that first header headline all the way at the top, was using a different typeface than the rest of the headers. So I would standardize that a bit. And again, standardize that body uh, font size, make it bigger, go up to the 16 pixels. The other thing I noticed that this shop now is an image, the CTA, mm -hmm. but the other CTAs aren't. So get this out of the image make it live text and standardize it with the other ones. This is so big, which makes me think that, which is what made me think that this is really what you're trying to get people to do. Um, depending on the email design, it can be a good strategy to put it all at the bottom. Uh, but in this email, I don't think it particularly does what you want it to do. But I also don't know what the conversion rate was. So maybe it converted great and then you can ignore me. You know, we're going without any context in that you know, general sense. Um, but those are the things that I would do to this email. Um, it's a beautiful email. And I think those small little tweaks are going to elevate you to the absolute next level to just send out these really lovely designed emails. Oh, and I also want to call out great job on email title and setting the language. Um, love that you did that. And I, and the one other thing I wanted to call out, uh, I remember when I looked at it, a lot mm. of your images, we'll head over to the next um, thing. Uh, this is presentation on the tables. I saw it, setting presentation on the tables. I'm not gonna call out each brand on it. I saw it across all the, all the emails. Presentation was missing on at least one table. Role equals presentation, missing on at least one table in every single email, so stay mindful of that. Um, but I think where you have put titles, you have meant to do some alt text. 
Um, no. Not on the A's. I remove. I would remove that title tag on your links. Um, if you are trying to do something for screen readers, I would use an ARIA label. Um, I'm calling out Mark Robbins in case I am wrong on that. I'm still learning about ARIA labels like properly. Um, I wouldn't use a title and email at all. Um, and on your images, make sure you're using that alt text instead of the title attribute. Um, fun fact, I learned not too long ago when you hovered over an image and you see like the text showing, I always thought that was part of alt text. That's actually your title uh, attribute and that's not helping you with screen readers as much. So use that alt text. All right, uh, Julia, we got less than five minutes. Do we know. want to jump to the next email or do we want to take some q and A? I I think we're getting a message from base that we should start with Q&A. All right, let's Q&A it. I'm going to stop sharing here. I'm going to move we could all y'all over to my main screen. Oh my I'm gosh, we could do like an hour of this. Yeah. <laughs> let it, I guess people, let us know if you want us to do these sorts of things. Yeah, yes, happen. for sure. If you want this sort of stuff. All right, looks like top one that came in first. Uh, someone wanted to know, let's see if I can push this through. What are the top email clients to test in EOA? Ooh, that's a good so, one. Yes, yeah, so when I test... I make sure I am testing Gmail and Android. We have like every, we have like everything's updated now. We have more stuff coming down the pipe soon. Um, some new clients are launching soon. I'm not telling them what you, telling you what they are. Sign up for newsletters and whatnot if you want to know. If you're a customer, you'll get the email. Um, so I do, you know, you're on mobile. I do a bunch of the different iPhone sizes. Um, things are starting to look a little bit different there with like the newer, bigger iPhones. Um, like my logo sizes change a little bit now with like the two times pixel density. And now there's a three time pixel density. Um, Gmail, Android, I have started testing uh, because you just never know, especially in dark mode, how those colors are going to flip flop. Um, I do my, I do Outlook 16, 19, 21. Uh, with Outlook, I do not test to older than 16 and I have not gotten any complaints or any problems. If somebody complains to me about like a certain version of Outlook that I'm not testing, they're seeing issues, you can always let me know and then I'll start testing it. Um, I do Gmail, AOL, Yahoo, Outlook.com. Um, those are basically the ones that I cover. Yeah. And just to build off of that, sorry, Thomas, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, mm -hmm. Our teammate Casey has put in um, the full list of clients that you can test with email and acid um, in the chat, um, just in case um, you want more info. Yes, and I'm also going to say this is obviously all going to depend on your own audience. Yeah, so, like, we have a pretty good grasp of what our audience is, so you should be use those email on Acid uh, Analytics to see where people are opening your emails, and then you can cater your list because there are like over gosh, uh, is there over a hundred clients now yeah. that you can test in. Yep, over hundred. It's a yep. lot. Yeah, over a hundred now. It's a lot. I think we're we have like the largest selection now. Um, so you know. You can always cater it to your audience. Yep. Heck yeah. Okay. Uh, looks like we're actually we're gonna make a little more time here. Let's see. Okay, this one I really wanted I want us to talk about because we've been talking about this personally and it cracks me up every time we talk about it. But oh, no. okay. Is click here actually a spam trigger? <laughs> yeah. Julia says yes, I say no, and I haven't you talked to her about this yet. <laughs> I haven't said anything to her yet, but I think no. <laughs> I think uh, um, okay, so if you look out there at any any list anywhere, it's going to include click here. Maybe it's just that we're all cringing from it and um, like recipients now see it. When I do get emails for that say click here, I'm like, ugh, I don't want to click there, you know? Um, does it actually? I, I've stayed away from it for so long that I, I haven't tested it myself. Um, Megan, why do you think that it doesn't? Be, I think it doesn't because spam filters are incredibly robust. Yeah. And I think the content and engagement is king or queen or whatever. It's royalty. Um, so if your emails are not engaging, that's what's going to cause the spam trigger to go, not like a random click here. I mm -hmm. do think you, I agree that you should not use click here mm -hmm. because there is no context to that. I am a big believer in that your copy on your, um, I'm a big believer that your 
copy in your email when you are linking words should be able to be read without the context of the surrounding text which yeah, we do a yeah. really good job linking with. And it should tell people where they're going. It's especially helpful, helpful to screen readers, for people listening to know when they hit a link and where that link is going to go. That's and if, my short answer. And if you have clicked here like multiple times, they're not gonna understand where to click. Like the screen reader is gonna be like, click here, click here, click here. It's too much. Yeah. Um, no, I think be better than the click here in any sense. Slash plus click here is very desktop thinking and half of people are on their phones. So click here doesn't make sense. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Y'all. Okay. We're going to do one more question and then we all got to boogie on over to Ann Tomlin session. Sorry, Ann. It's all right. It's all right. And, and yeah, we're going to do Ann right after this. So we got one more for y'all. Let's see. Oh, here. So Real exciting. Quick. Okay. Real quick. <laughs> um, num, 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 num. Actually, Julia and Megan, do y'all want to pick one really quick? Sure. Oh, I, uh, okay, sure. Julia. Yeah, yeah, sure pick. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, stress, stress. Julia, you pick. <laughs> I'm so indecisive. Um, let's see. Oh my gosh, this is hard. Um, oh, oh, Megan, what reading yeah. resources would you recommend to start building an email design system for a marketing team? Oh, 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 the email on acid website. We have a bunch of stuff to get started on there. Um, definitely head over to the email and acid blog. I have a ton of articles about email development on there. There are older articles about email development on there, not written by me that are still really good. Um, I mentioned during Mark's session, if you go to YouTube and search for Parcel Unpacked, I did a talk about building an email design system. Um, the keynote from Email Camp last year that I did with Abby Goldman from Parcel, uh, we do a lot with Parcel. Um, <laughs> the the uh, keynote I did with him last year is about it's very high level getting started. So I actually would start with that talk and then go watch the one that I gave gave at Parcel Unpacked earlier in the year. Uh, it's a good like one two um, high level and then diving into it. Love mm -hmm. it, love it. Sounds good, y'all. Okay, cool, cool, y'all. Well, y'all. That is all the time we got today. I seriously appreciate the both of you meet me in space. Y'all, these two are just some of my favorite workers I get to work with. We get to do a lot of cool stuff together. And obviously mm -hmm. the emails and everything, all that stuff you, that you've been that you've been receiving from email camp, from MailJet, from email and acid, from MailGen, all that fun stuff. It comes from these two amazing folks. So let's give them a round of applause. And they do some amazing stuff. So it's always a fabulous time to have them to get to hang out. Maybe we need to do a Julia and Megan show more often. I would love to yes. set that up. So Put our name in Definitely lights, Thomas. Hey, hey, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> but, <laughs> all right, you two. Thank you so much for stopping by, and uh, we'll you. see you soon, all right? Thank you. Yeah. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye. Heck yeah, y'all. Let's give them some love in the chat. All right, everyone. We're going to go ahead and migrate over to Ann Tomlin's session. So I'm going to go ahead and head out of here, and I'm going to boogie on over to Ann Tomlin. So I'll see you all in just a moment, all right?